And I'd like to welcome our brother Shashi Kant Jadhav. And let me spotlight. And there you are. Welcome. Now, Shashi Kant Jadhav has been practicing and teaching mindfulness uh, and yoga over the last 12 years. Of course, this has been a lifelong love for him and practice. For the last 12 years, though, he's he, uh, uh, he's been teaching all ages, including those with disabilities. And he's done a lot of service for those who are deaf and um, those that are going through severe stress. So his focus is on healing. And um, he loves the meditation uh, practice as well as yoga. And he has uh, organized the International Day of Yoga in parts of uh, Mumbai, India. So I'm so glad to have you here today and interesting how the doors have opened up for our worlds to meet and for you to share your yoga with us and meditation and to just really guide us into a, a lovely relaxing afternoon. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. I'm really grateful to our Prime Minister uh, Sri Narendra Ji Modi on uh, staging this international yoga event in uh, 2014 and from 15 onward I had privilege to uh, stage this uh, international yoga day with my members Swim Yoga then Dhyan Yoga in San Francisco and last year we got opportunity to celebrate this. So apart from Brahma Baba and Shiva Baba, my idol is Swami Vivekanandji. Uh, I would like to quote his experience, what he says about meditation. A marvelous point of light between my eyebrows as soon as I shut my eyes to go to sleep. He is talking about his childhood and I used to watch its various changes with great attention. That light of point is very important and we in yoga we uh, follow that. That marvelous point of light would change colors and get bigger until it took the form of a ball, football ball. He used to love football very much. so. His imagination of that point is a foot, like a ball. And what happened? From head to foot, with white uh, ball, finally it would burst and cover my body from head to foot with white li li liquid light. White liquid light. As soon as that happened, I would look outer consciousness and fall asleep. I used to believe that the way everybody went to sleep. So this way everybody must be sleeping, that's what he means. Then when I grow older and began to practice meditation, that point of light would appear to me as soon as I close my eyes. And I would concentrate upon that. So these two points are very interesting for me. Because one pointedness and concentration, what Maharshi Patanjali says, as well as uh, Swatma Ramji, who has written Hatha Yoga. So, while going through their texts and learning my yoga practices, I concentrated on these two points. So, let us begin with what I am going to say because uh, we should not short up time. So, first, we will chant three times Omkara, then Poshas. Poshas are with Baddha Hasta Uttanasana. So raise hand, join hand, raise upward. That will be there. Then warrior poses. Warrior poses in three different uh, uh, positions rather. And thereafter, we will do one interesting thing that Akarna Dhanurasana. Akarna Dhanurasana, bow and arrow posture. So that I will demonstrate. And this is what I have learned from uh, Hatha Yoga. Then 
very interesting point is meditative pranayams what i have selected anulom vilom brahmari udgit and pranava aradhana so udgit is itself is a chanting of om so we will be chanting om three different ways and then pranava aradhana is resonance of om so let us practice let us start to take uh, if you are sitting on mat just sit any comfortable pose it may be vajrasan what i am sitting or sukhasan this this is the way sukhasan then padmasan half padmasan and full padmasan so sit in any comfortable pose if you are sitting in chair no no problem uh, see that only instruction that your backbone should be straight your chin parallel to ground smile on face and your concentration again what i have seen that point of light that center of your eyebrows just bring your awareness your thinking whatever and try to focus at center of your eyebrows your hand will be in dhyana mudra sit in comfortable pose wherever you are be comfortable inhale exhale inhale exhale now all of us will chant omkara together three time we are going to chant omkara inhale om inhale chant let us practice first pranayam breathing technique inhalation retention exhalation retention we will inhale 1 2 3 we will retain the breath 1 2 3 3 that is antar kumbhak and we exhale 1 2 3 4 5 and we hold that breath for that amount of time 1 to 1 ratio we will practice for a minute this Inhale one two three. Retain the breath one two three. Exhale one two three. Retain the breath one two three. Antar kumbak baya kumbak.
Stop this practice. Keep your eyes closed. Bring your attention on your natural breath. Observe that breath. Any changes? Any feelings? Om, raise your hands up, your arms touching to your ear, raise your hands up, up and join both palms, rub them, rub them, rub them, rub them, rub them, rub them and apply to your face and your hair and now get ready for asanas. Are you ready? Yeah, he wants to see the screen. Yeah. Okay, get ready. Uh, just see my feet. Are you able to sit my see my feet and my hands up? Yes. Now let us start with first Baddha Hasta Uttanasana. Raise hand posture going up. So put your right hand down on left hand top of that. Bring your chest. Those who are sitting in chair, just bring on that position, wherever you are sitting, try to bring your hands below your navel, that is lower abdomen, and just see first what I'm doing. I'm inhaling, taking my hands by side, and I'm keeping awareness of my right hand, which will go back and left hand cross it. And now I will stretch my body up. I will stay there for some time. That is, while well, inhale, I will inhale going up and I'm holding my breath there. That is Antar Kumbhak. Now exhale. Keep your awareness that your right hand will come down. And hold, breathe outside. Bajya Kumbhak. Again, inhale. Go up. Hold your breath. Exhale, come down one more time. Inhale, take your hands up. Exhale, come down. Okay, now your left hand will go down and right hand will on top of that. Inhale, see my chest. I'm broadening my chest. My shoulders are going back, my hand parallel to ground, and now I will go up, but my left hand is on back side. I will set my hand up. Now exhale, come down. Inhale, go up. Exhale, come down. Okay, now we will do little faster and it is at your this thing, this uh, distinction, whatever you want to do, just take your left hand or right hand back or forward. Inhale this way and go up. One, two, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Okay. 
Now get ready for bow and arrow uh, posture. Take your right foot forward. Place it on ground. Those who are sitting on chair, they should do on chair itself. Uh, stretching your right foot forward. Now bring your right hand up and your thumb facing to your ear. It should be on your eye level, your thumb. Now make a brace. Well, fold another four fingers. Now we are holding bow. So bow is very heavy. So your hand, you have to put full weight on your left leg to hold this bow and right leg is supporting it. But your hand and your leg in foot in same uh, line rather. Now, your left hand is going to hold that sting and bow. So you are holding this bow, just see what I am doing. I will take this back, back, back above my ear because I have to put full strength. I am just pulling it. Now I will release with exhalation. Inhale. 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 Okay, go back. Now take your left leg forward. Bring your left hand in line with your left foot. Hold bow strongly. It's a very heavy bow. Now take your left hand holding the string and pull that string, pull that string with force, pull, 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 pull and stay there. Now exhale out and throw your bow. Okay, inhale. That hand will remain same. Left hand is stand uh, at this place and right hand you are pulling your bow. Okay, now here we, we have see, uh, done two things. First, posture we have done and what Ashtang Yoga says, uh, Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam. So we did some Kapalabhati here. While pulling bow, we, we have kept our inhalation passive. We are pulling this way. And releasing bow, we are exhaling out actively. So passive inhalation, active exhalation is Kapalabhati. And in between we are waiting. So we are holding that breath. That is internal kumbhak and external kumbhak. So now let us go for Veer Bhadrasan, warrior poses, different warrior poses. So let me guide you. Open your leg more than your shoulder distance. Those who are sitting, they can do on while sitting. This is the position. Now bring your hands forward. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands forward. Just see what I'm doing. I'm going on right side. And I will turn my right foot 90 degrees and my left foot 45 degrees. Now I will ground my feet on the mat. So I will get support and my concentration on any point in front of me, uh, eye level. Now see what I'm doing. I'm folding my right foot from my knee. My concentration on that point and my left leg trying to support, balance any fall or anything. So here I'm and slowly come up, go on your left side, now turn to your left, bend your left knee, go down, see that your hind leg, knee is straight, come back in middle, go on right, bend your knee, 
come back go on left side okay so now we will do second variation in this same way but when we are going to write we have to inhale and bend our leg when we are going this way exhale out so you first inhale bend your knee exhale let your hand go up inhale and exhale and come in between inhale left side bend your knee go up exhale come down so this is second variation our hand is going up now we will do third variation go on right bend your knee take your hands up stay there and now bring your right hand forward left and backward see that your hands parallel to ground there's a 90 degree angle between your uh, thigh muscles thigh muscles and your knee concentrate on nail of your middle finger of right hand and stretch your both hand slightly press down your body stay there come back go on left side bend your knee take your hands up now bring your left hand down right hand back both hands in one line parallel to mother earth concentrate nail of your center finger stay there for a few minutes come back go on right side again bend your knee take your hands up ground your feet take right hand forward left hand backward concentrate on nail of middle finger stay there stay your hands stay your hands and come back so let us go our next segment sit down any comfortable pose okay so i will sit in padmasana those are comfortable in padmasana try to sit in padmasana or any other comfortable pose instruction is that with your backbone straight chin parallel to ground smile on your face and dhyan mudra but first let us start with anulom vilom alternate nostril breathing then bhramari then udgit and pranam aradhana bring your see my fingers uh, what i will do my thumb then my ring, ring finger and middle finger will folded and it is touching to root of my thumb and another remaining two fingers are open i will press my right thumb on my right nostril my left nostril is open i will inhale through left exhale to right i will inhale to right exhale to left alternate nostril anulom vilom inhale keep your eyes closed hold the breath exhale out from right then inhale from right exhale out from left so anulom vilom always start with left nostril retain breath exhale out from right then inhale from right exhale out from left again inhale retention exhale retention left right right left right left resolution in your mind shiva sankalpana in your mind that with every inhalation i am inhaling positive energy from the nature 
with every exhalation, I'm removing negativity of my mind, body, and soul. So keep going for few counts. Inhalation, retention, exhalation, retention. Inhale from left nostril, retain breath. Exhale from right nostril, retain the breath. Inhale from right nostril, retain breath. Exhale from left. Exhale from left nostril and stop this practice. Keep your eyes closed. Bring your thumbs closing your earbuds. Then your index finger on your eyes, slight pressure, middle finger on your nose, and remaining two fingers closing your mouth. This is called Shanmukhi Mudra, closing your mouth. Inhale through nose and make humming bee sound from nose. Inhale. Mm. your eyes closed, bring your hand on your lap, inside your knees, Dhanu Mudra, index finger of your thumb and your index finger and thumb, tips touching to each other, keep smile on your face, chin parallel to ground, backbone straight, we are going to recite Omkara Ujgit Pranam. Now we will first Recite Om. O will be shorter than M. I will just show you. I will inhale. Om. O is shorter and M is longer. So we will recite this five times. Then O will be longer and M will be shorter for five times. And 21 time we will recite O and Ma equal. So get ready. Don't change your position wherever you are sitting. Be comfortable, body at ease, smile on face, chin parallel to ground. Inhale. 
left hand your palm facing upward touching to your body two fingers above your navel this way and bring your right hand on your sternum bone center of your chest now we are going to recite o longer than m five times inhale o Keep your eyes closed. Pranam Aradhana. Pranam is Omkara. You have put your hand on your chest, sternum bone. There's a vibration. There's a japa jab. There's a resonance of Om. Try to hear this at every channels, every Kundalini channels are vibrating with this sound. From your Muladhar, Swadhisthan, Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddhi, Agya, Bindu, Sahasra. The flow going upward and then it is coming down from Sahasra to Bindu to Vishuddhi to Anahat to Manipur, Swadhisthan and Muladhar. Enjoy this moment. Keep your eyes closed. 
see the vibration in your body. It is the outer layer of your body, but you have now overcome that outer level and you internally, eternally, just going through your channels, your soul, your super soul is blessing you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Keep your eyes closed. Just be within. Asatoma said the Gamaya, Tamasoma, Jotir Gamaya, Ruturma, Rutam Gamaya, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Take us from darkness to light. Take us from ignorance to knowledge. Take us from immortality, immortality to mortality to immortality. Bring peace in all our world. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om, raise your hands, keep your eyes closed. Join your palms, rub them, apply this to your face and your hair. Second time, same repetition. Your hair and third time, apply this to your face and open your eyes, see through you and apply this energy to whole of your body. So now session is not over. Now we will do clapping and laughing. So I will show you. I Sorry, Shashikan, I... We have to move on to the next item. It's okay? Is it just a second. Okay. So we'll do clapping once. Ready, start. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Fast, 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 fast. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. Fast, 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 f
Yeah. I'm sure everyone's going yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so much blessed. I'm so much blessed to be with you. And whenever you call, I'll be there. Oh, really thank you for sharing your love for yoga, your love for meditation, your love for truth, and sharing your experience wealth of experience with us today and i it was a real good taste or teaser almost to invite us to enjoy more in the future so thank you again yes yes, yes, yes. but uh, it's so kind of you your yes. kind word i'm really blessed thank you very much okay take care om shanti thank you so om shanti bye bye everyone <laughs> In short time, I tried. I tried yeah. to convey something. Thank you. Vivekananda believe in meditation, and Maharishi Patanjali has taught us. So, in nutshell, or glimpses. So, I tried to give that. Thank you very much. Thank yes, thank you so much, so much, Shashi Kanpai. Okay. And now, that was so wonderful. I really, actually, feel quite present with all of you and um, heart, mind, soul, and body. So it's a lovely opportunity for us to balance all of these arts and be an embodiment of Om Shanti on all those levels. And now we are graced with a message from the India Consul General himself, especially for today's event. And Ambassador Dr. Nagendra Prasad, uh, he is the Consul General of India. And before taking that position, he uh, served at the Ministry of External Affairs as Joint Secretary heading the Gulf Division and so now he's with us serving in San Francisco with a message for the International Day of Yoga. Thank you. Namaskar. I would like to greet you all at Brahma Kumaris on the occasion of 7th International Day of Yoga from the Consulate General of India in San Francisco. Since the passing of the resolution at the UN, the Yoga Day is being held worldwide across the continents. I appreciate you all for constantly and continuously teaching and practicing this ancient treasure here in the US. Yoga is not an exercise, it's a way of life. It's a technique to maintain a balance between physical, mental, and emotional, intellectual levels of human existence. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha Patanjali, Yogi Patanjali, has said thousands of years ago that yoga is a process of gaining mastery over the mind. It allows one to realize the inner potential. The lifestyles and then food habits, the working levels have changed resulting in several uh, chronic ailments. Yoga can play a very, very important role in managing these besides building up immunity. Integrated approach uh, through yoga therapy, IAYT, is a new method uh, for treating uh, these lifestyle disorders. The specific postures in yoga asanas, the breathing exercises, pranayama and the meditation are found to be effective in preventing ailments, chronic diseases and by calming down the mind and make one unite with the nature and surroundings. I'm sure much research is going on which is a continuous process and is attracting wider attention in the world. Government of India has been strengthening the certification system for yoga 
professionals and soon we will be publishing the yoga certification board guidelines and protocol which may be useful for uh, everyone here in the US. Uh, hope uh, this particular certification process will help further strengthening the network of yoga teachers across the world. As part of India at 75 celebrations to celebrate India's 75 years of independence, you all must come together to hold one yoga event in the coming year, which the Consulate General of India will be happy to join to celebrate yoga, which is a gift to a humanity. Dhanyavad, Jai Hind. Thank you, little guru, for those 12 poses. They're very common asanas uh, in Hatha Yoga. And also thank you so much to uh, Dr. TV Nagendra Prasad, the Indian Consul General serving in San Francisco for your message. And now I would like to welcome Brother Karan and Sister Vinu Hello, welcome, Brother Karan. All the way from Malaysia, it's morning time for him there. And I would also like to invite Sister Vinu from Los Angeles. This is very special, isn't it? Because the two of you, these two souls have been in Raj Yoga meditation knowledge since they were 10, I think. Is that correct? Am I in the right ballpark or even younger? I was three. Oh, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> I was two plus. Two plus. Basically, they were born in this knowledge. But it's one thing to have that exposure, and it's another thing, right, to sustain your practice and your uh, relationship with the divine and uh, empowering yourself as a serviceable instrument, which both of you have. And um, to tell a little bit about Brother Karan, um, he, of course, has uh, been practicing Raj Yoga for, since uh, uh, 1992. And he is a physiotherapist by profession and has been incorporating the teachings of Raj Yoga uh, with his work in various muscular skeletal cases that he's been working with in physio physio physiotherapy rehabilitation. I'm sure he could say that much better than me. <laughs> um, but he also works in rehab for cardio patients and neurological cases. So he has a wealth of knowledge of the physical body in which we move through in the world, but also for that key energy of the soul to invigorate the body. And then Sister Vinu uh, Sivasami, she has been a Raj Yoga student for a long time, as you know, and she is a neuroscientist. And she's a very well experienced yoga, Raj Yoga meditation teacher. She lives in the 
the Los Angeles Meditation Center, and she's also serving in Cerritos. Um, she dedicated her life to spiritual service, and she is a delight to be with. She has as a wonderful personality, smiles, and good wishes for everyone, but she knows her stuff. She's really grounded and very responsible and um, very knowledgeable. So really, I thank you so much for being here today and guiding us on this journey, Fit While You Sit, celebrating International Yoga Day. So I'll bring the floor off to you. So uh, thank you, sister. <laughs> this is the first time actually um, both of us are doing this program together. I've been out I've been out of Malaysia for the past I think 17 years maybe. So I've not seen Brother Karan ever since. <laughs> so Karan Bai, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> we share a lot of um, childhood memories. We went to children's classes together, youth classes together. And then after that, uh, we separated, right? And he also lives in the center uh, in one of the state called Johor in Malaysia. So he lives uh, in the center. And so nice to see. And um, Karan Bai, it's all yours now. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. Thank you, Sister Vino, for the very, very warm welcome. Lots of greetings from Malaysia. It's a nice Sunday, sunny Sunday morning. So um, I was told to talk about uh, the effects of exercise on the human body. But uh, before that, we are going to go through a very important uh, session that is the relaxation session. It's very important because before we start our exercise, it's best to relax the muscles first the whole body first. So we can do that with just a uh, few moments of uh, speaking to ourselves or like a meditation commentary. So I will uh, say a commentary and you can follow. It's uh, very easy. You can do this every day, anytime. Um, it's advised to do this at least twice a day in the morning and also before going to bed. Or if you are a person who exercises regularly, it's good to use this technique every time before you start your exercise and after your exercise. So just sit back, relax. If you're sitting on a chair, make sure your back is uh, relaxed. You're leaned on the chair, you're leaned against the chair, your feet on the ground. If you're sitting on the chair, do not fold your legs. If your chair has armrests, you can place your hands or your arms on the armrest and just relax. So I become aware of the surrounding. I can hear the clock ticking. Now I bring my attention towards the body. I feel my legs. I make them relax. I feel my arms, my shoulders, my backs. I relax all the muscles. Now I bring my attention towards my breathing. I observe the rhythm of my breathing. I feel the subtle beating of my heart. I feel my facial muscles. 
I relax my forehead, my cheeks. And now I focus on the middle of the forehead. I visualize a sparkling star. I am that sparkling star, the bee. I am not the body. I am not the human but I am the bee. I am the master of this human body. Being the master, I spread healthy, good vibrations to all the organs. I am peace and I am spreading peaceful vibration throughout the body. Vibrations spread from the forehead to the tip of my toes. I visualize a healthy body, a body free from disease, no stress, a completely relaxed body. I enjoy this moment. So I hope you could follow. I'm trying to see all of you. Okay, so yeah, great. So you can do this every day. It does not take time. Not you don't have to even spend five minutes. Right? Okay. So um, now we are going to look into uh, what exercise is. I'm sure when I say, who knows what is exercise, many of you would say, you know, but uh, many of us have the wrong understanding actually, what exercise is. Many times I ask my patients, do you do exercise? And they say, yes. Very conf confidently, they say, yes, I do exercise. And when I ask them, okay, what kind of exercises do you do? And they say, oh, I do gardening. I play badminton. I play football. I clean the whole house. So actually, that is not exercise, actually. Those are actually activities which you perform through the body. Exercise is a set of movements that is done for specific groups of muscles. And these movements are done to strengthen the muscles so that we can use them in our daily activities. For example, if you take a footballer, he just cannot go into the game just like that. He needs to go for prior trainings. And those trainings are actually trainings to improve the muscle activity in terms of strength and flexibility. These are the two main areas that we focus on when we do exercise. So I just share a slide for your better understanding. Is it visible? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. I'm try to okay visible better yes thank you all right so exercise is the repeated rhythmic movement given to body parts to keep it healthy and develop the body parts so 
a body needs to be moved if it's kept ideal for even just one week if you see somebody who is bedridden for one week you will notice that the muscles shrink and the body becomes smaller because the muscles are not moving only when the muscles move the the muscle is preserved in terms of the bulk of the muscle the strength of the muscle and the flexibility of the muscle so under exercise we have two main things that is stretching and strengthening commonly people only focus on strengthening many do not stress on stretching which is actually a very very important part and that is why we advise everybody to do stretching before strengthening and also stretching after strengthening okay you can follow so far everything okay exercise is not something very uh, complicated or complex no there's just two things in it just stretching and strengthening i wouldn't say uh, football or whatever games like badminton or tennis i wouldn't call it exercise because actually if you really look at it you need exercise to perform well in the games so yes playing games will improve your cardio respiratory or cardio pulmonary uh, capacity which is good but in terms of your musculoskeletal which is your bones and your muscles it may be damaging if you don't have the proper stretching and strengthening okay so i just want to see uh, a show of hands how many of you actually exercise okay i can see some you can even virtually raise your hands in through the reaction button okay okay right good many of you actually exercise that's good so i hope you are saying that you exercise in terms of my explanation just now exercise doesn't mean your household chores or games right right good it should be uh and there should be strengthening and stretching components into it okay so how many of you uh exercise once a week you can raise your hands and i can see once a week okay twice a week twice a week no baby okay three times and more three and above very good okay very good so the optimum uh, advised uh, frequency in a week is that three times and above okay so you we'll first look at stretching what is stretching stretching is uh, being capable of making your muscle wider and longer without tearing or breaking so whenever we do stretching is not that we force ourselves no we do it to the point where we actually feel the stretch and we hold that for at least 15 seconds so the whole time the optimum holding time of a stretch is 15 seconds and the number of time it could vary up from 3 times to 5 times some people even do 7 to 8 times which is good but if you are going to start from the beginners level i would advise 3 to 5 times repetitions with 15 seconds all of each stretch now the strengthening <clears throat> strengthening is to become stronger or more effective all of us know many of us know many usually guys they go to the gym and they just lift but they forget to do stretching and that's when injury happens in the gym for example a muscle tear or a slip disc i get many patients with slip disc due to going to the gym and when i ask them do you do any stretching sure enough it's a no <laughs> so stretching is very very important it does not make you weak some people feel that if i stretch my muscle a lot i will lose the uh, what can i say the 
the hardness or the bulk of my muscle, but it's it's actually not not like that. Okay. If you can do this together, stretching and strengthening, then uh, you will get a very good healthy muscle and also a bones. Mm -hmm. So now we see the effects of uh, stretching. Mm -hmm. Stress relief, less anxiety, relief from sore muscles. Mm -hmm. Many times when we do exercises and we don't focus on stretching, we end up with muscle soreness because uh, there are certain acids, we call it uh, lactic acids, which is released by the muscles when we do strengthening exercise. And these acids remain stagnant if we don't do our stretching after the strengthening. So that is what causes soreness when we wake up the next morning. I think many of you might have experienced this. And um, next is improved posture. Yes, because when we do too much of uh, strengthening with no stretching, our muscles become tight and that pulls the bones and that will cause improper posture. Next is less risk of injury. So in a game, for example, tennis or football again, or basketball, I don't know what, <laughs> what sports is uh, famous in America. What sports is famous in America? Can I know? I know in Malaysia, badminton and football. In America? Maybe somebody can tell me. Basketball. Basketball. Okay, right. So basketball, we take basketball. If there's no stretching, I know in basketball, you have to do like sudden movements and things like that. So when there's no stretching and you do a sudden movement and your muscles are tight, what happens? Your muscle will tear. Even your ligaments will tear. And that is why ACL, we call it ACL, uh, anterior cruciate ligament of the knee, commonly tears because of this reason. There is no stretching. Okay, and better flexibility. Why, why do we need better flexibility? For example, uh, the, the, best re the best reason why I can give you is that we need flexibility, especially in our old age. Why do we find some old people, they become rigid? It's because they don't have stretching habits. If from a young age, or even now, if you start now, and later on, when you grow older, you will have better flexibility and you can prevent problems like falling or cramming. Many old people have cramps at night, especially. So if we have a habit of stretching every day before going to bed, we would be able to avoid those kind of problems. And most importantly, relief from back pain. Now, majority of people around the world have back pain. Those days, it just used to be people who are involved in heavy work, like, for example, lifting. This kind of occupations give back, causes back pain. Whereas now, even people who work in office setup, just sitting at the desk can get back pain because they are too long, prolonged in just one position, which causes the back muscles to tighten up. And that will cause back pain. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the effects of stretching. There are many more because every day researchers are coming up with the benefits of exercise. So this is the uh, recommended uh, frequency in a week for you to perform stretching two to three times a week, at least 20 to 40 minutes. If you can't go for 20 to 40 minutes, at least 15 minutes before you wake up, I mean, after you wake up and before you go to sleep. Okay? Clear? So next we will see about uh, strengthening. So strengthening, all of us know, makes us stronger and fitter, protects bone health. Yes. Strengthening does not only affect our muscles, but it also affects our bone density, especially for women, for sisters. It is advised at the age of 40 onwards, 
you have to do some kind of strengthening exercise i mean if you start earlier it's much better but if you have not started it's good to start today because it will affect your bone health osteoporosis is very common in sisters especially so it's good to start strengthening do some weight bearing exercises if you have dumbbells at home 1 kilo or 2 kilo will do and there are many exercises that you can do with just two dumbbells so next is you can control your body fat so instead of your body being covered with fats you can have good muscle covering your bones and how to get this is that you must at least do strengthening exercise for at least 20 minutes because after 20 minutes that is when the body starts to break down its fats to be used as energy so try to push yourself a, a bit every day little by little to reach 20 minutes of strengthening exercise helps you develop better body mechanics helps with chronic disease management for example if you have uh, diabetes or hypertension all these can be managed well if there is proper strengthening exercise i would say both stretching and strengthening so this is the recommended uh, repetitions and frequency so you can okay so this was actually for stretching okay this is wrong this was stretching okay whole stretch for 15 seconds repeat three or more more times for strengthening you can do it two to three times a week of course i was saying this now three times is the optimum recommended time if you can do it three times a week every alternate days it will be good for 20 to 40 minutes okay so any questions if somebody could how long do you do the strengthening for how long do you do the strengthening for if it is the 20 40 minutes for stretching and then how long for strengthening strengthening also you can do 20 to 40 minutes whatever exercise even uh, aerobic exercise for example jogging or brisk walking it is always recommended to do 20 to 40 minutes per day per session like what i said this now because after 20 minutes that is when the body will start to use the fats for energy before 20 minutes it's using the stored energy so if you want to focus on your ma- weight management it is best to go up to 20 to 40 minutes in okay. walking uh, how fast can should one walk is slow walk okay or not it depends it depends on the individual for example i can't say a, i can't tell a 70 year old or 80 year old to walk <laughs> fast right so if you're in the age range of a uh, teenager to young adult maybe about 15 to 40 years old brisk walk is good you can you you can have a target maybe you can start with the first week i'm going to walk 3 kilometers within 30 minutes or 40 minutes so this is how you start it depends on the individual so the somebody who's asked is yoga the same as stretching in a way yes because when we do stretching we also uh focus on our breathing okay when we stretch most of the time we tend to hold our breathing because we feel the pain in the muscle when we stretch which is not right actually you have to breathe normally because when you breathe normally what happens is your cardio circuit i mean your circulatory system is working okay your blood is, your your heart is pumping the blood to all the muscles so when all the muscles are well uh when there is good blood circulation to all the muscles the muscle is more relaxed and it's easier for you to stretch there was a question uh brother yes. Khan. um you might want to end your video so yeah. yeah we can see you uh thank you uh they were saying is walking uh considered exercise i know that's not weight bearing is stretching mm-hmm. considered exercise even though it's not weight bearing so what do you consider as exercise okay like in the beginning i was saying that you know exercise is the main branch okay is the main bark of the tree and there are branches of stretching and strengthening mm-hmm. 
Okay. So under stretching, you have some exercises. Under strengthening, you have some exercises. Can Brother Karan demonstrate some exercises? Yes, <laughs> we will be doing that in a while. But I wouldn't be showing and what too is, much. What is yeah, walking for back. under then? What is walking for coming under in. then? What is walking for under? A stretching walking, or strengthening? I, hmm, walking, I would classify it under strengthening because it strengthens your cardio was your cardio pulmonary uh, capacity. It regulates your heartbeat. Thank you. Because in strengthening, if you want to divide it further, under strengthening, there is aerobic and anaerobic exercises. So walking, I mean, brisk walking, um, swimming, running, jogging, is all under, even dancing is all under aerobic. It's a form of exercise to improve the heart function, heart and lung function or the circuitry system. And in anaerobic is more of weight lifting or body weight training, this kind of thing. And for okay. older people, do, you, do we need both? Yes, definitely. You need both, but you have to know what is the proper exercise. You can't do like any exercise that you see on YouTube or Google. You have to have your body assessed by a physiotherapist or anybody who is uh, well versed in, uh, in this uh, field of exercises, a gym instructor, they would give you the advice what to do based on Thank your you. body needs. See, sometimes um, we call it a warm up. Is a warm up is a yes. stretching or or what, what this thing is it means because here warm up so yeah warm up is stretching we do warm up when we say we do warm up means we're doing stretching warm up in the sense that we're warming up our muscles like what I said just now when we stretch we have to just breathe normally so that the blood is flowed to the muscles and uh, our internal body temperature is naturally warm so is our blood. So when the warm blood gets transferred to the muscles during stretching, that is where we say you're warmed up. <laughs> we, we usually say we start with warm up. Uh, we start with warm up and then at the end we say cool down. So cool mm -hmm. down is again yes. stretching. Just that's what you're referring yes. to? Stretching again, yes. Because after doing strengthening exercise, the outer body becomes hot or warm. We don't say hot, we say warm. And we need blood to cool down or even our sweat actually cools down the body. So sweating is a good thing. It's not that it's bad. Your toxins are being released and your body temperature is being regulated. So it's always advised not to do uh, exercise under an air-conditioned room or under a fan because it's always better for the body to cool down by itself instead of rapidly being cooled down. Because when you rapidly cool down your body, the vascular system constricts and there will not be proper blood flow. And I was talking about the lactic acid. It will not be flowed properly through the vessels. So we need the body to cool down by itself. Take its time. Thank you. Uh, Karan, would you have a, information perhaps now or at the end of your session or websites that people can um, link into and get information to answer these specific questions, such as uh, where we can find different types of stretching and strengthening uh, for young if you and, want, and if also. If you want, I can prepare something and then I put an uh, email to you, then you can print it out and put up on your board or you could circulate it, it's not a problem. Okay, and so I could ask people to give me their email at the end of this session today and I'll be sure that they get that. You just give me your email and I'll forward that to you. And I, I can see these kind of questions, you can see them for yourself as well, Brother Karan. Like, what about high intensity aerobics and weightlifting? Would that be considered, you know, strengthening? I think that's the concern. If you're not really into lifting weights, would housework do the job? Would 
pruning a tree do the job? I mean, I've had this question asked me a lot and I wouldn't know what to say to people. What, what, what are your thoughts on that for vigorous work or um, uh, walking? Is it a strengthening? Walking is fine, like what I said just now. Walking is fine for your cardiopulmonary capacity. That means for the work of your heart and lungs. It, it strengthens your heart and lungs. But it is not going to strengthen your legs. <laughs> you see why? Because you are using, when you're walking, you're making your muscle work. But what if your muscle does not have that capacity, that strength to work, to walk three kilometers, three miles in 30 minutes? Right? So it's always best to do specific exercises. Like what I said, there's no exercise is always, it's best to focus exercise on a group of muscles. For example, uh, when we are doing strengthening, hmm? Yes, when you're doing aerobic, yes, that is for your heart and lungs. But it's good to also practice anaerobic strengthening. Anaerobic strengthening is more focused strengthening, means that, for example, I want to walk far. I want to be able to do brisk walking every morning, but I do not want any knee pain at the end of my walk. So what I should do is I should be able to strengthen the muscles that are present around my knee, that is my thigh muscles and my leg muscles. Okay. So there are specific exercises for this. So that is why I'm, I'm saying is uh, you have to determine what is your need. For example, I, 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 my, my nature of job is that I have to lift heavy things. So you have to give you exercises which focus on your core muscles. That is your abdominal muscles, your pelvic floor muscles, and your low back muscles, so that you'll be able to perform your your job optimally without any problem. Or you can say that you're a housewife and you have to mop the floor and all that. Mopping the floor is actually a very complex movement, no. and you need to have very no, good muscle flex flexibility and um, muscle strength. So there are exercises which are uh, specially designed for this, for these uh, activities. Okay, I hope it's clear. So somebody's asked, what is biking? Biking is uh, an, uh, aerobic, just like jogging and swimming. The best exercise your whole body can get is by swimming. If you can swim at least two to three times a week, that will be good. Because it not only uh, exercises the heart and lung, but also overall body. Because, and another thing, another benefit of our swimming is that there is no pressure on your joints because of the buoyancy of the water. Right? What is the second? Come again. What is the second best after swimming? The second best after swimming, I would say brisk walking is good enough. Brisk walking, not slow walk, not normal walking, brisk walking. What is brisk you walking? Want to do the... Can you explain? What is okay, brisk actually, walking? Brisk walking is actually a bit more faster than your normal walking, but not jogging. It's, it's not jogging. Okay. And in brisk walking, <clears throat> there are certain things that you need to pay attention to when you're doing it. Uh, for example, the placement of your feet. Some people have improper walking habits. Mm -hmm. So during this brisk walking, we have to pay attention to that. First, we have to strike with our heel and then our feet becomes flat and then our heel pushes off and then our toes goes off. So it's a very complex uh, movement actually. I will get a video on it and then I will share it with Sister Elizabeth, then you can share it with everyone. Okay, Hello. anything else? What about, what about pranayam is considered exercise? Pranayam? Like pranayam, pranayam. exercise is enough, yeah. for, enough for... Like instant. what, brother? 
uh, brother was showing just now the demonstration on Hatha Yoga. I was looking at it and I find that it's very, very useful. It can be very useful for many of us. So it's advice, if you can follow those techniques, it will be good. So your stretching is covered. Actually, there was more of stretching when I saw this that, that demonstration. So if you can do that every day, your stretching part is covered. The next, you just have to focus on some strengthening. I have a question. Yes. How many minutes uh, per hour? Uh, I mean, how many minutes per mile for brisk walking? I would say three kilometers in 30 minutes for the start. Okay. Try to achieve that three kilometers in three minutes. Three kilometers. Initially, it will be difficult. Three kilometers is, um, we know Ben, three kilometers is? <laughs> About five miles, maybe? Five miles. Five point something. Because in Malaysia, <laughs> we use everything as in kilometers. I know in US, it's everything in miles. We can look it up on Google. It's okay. Yeah. Is five, five miles is equal to eight kilometers? Five miles is equal to eight kilometers. Kilometers. Okay. So it's about four something. So maybe 15, mm -hmm. 14, 15 minutes a mile is a brisk walking. It's a yeah. two miles. It's a two miles. Three kilometers. Two, two miles. Mile, almost two miles. Actually, three points becomes three point two kilometers. Two miles is equal to three point two kilometers. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you can say Brow ballpark figure is that two miles in thirty minutes, as you're saying. So it's a four miles mm -hmm. an hour. That's kind of a uh -huh. yeah. Back. yeah, that's about comes out to be done. Thank you so much. Normally, it's usually it's a three miles an hour. Most of the time we walk, literally mm -hmm. it's about three miles an hour. But if you walk four, then it becomes brisk. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rajinder Bhai. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Types of shoe, yes. Types of shoe is very important. Get a shoe which uh, is suitable for you. Preferably something with good shock absorbers because when you are running or when you are brisk walking, you tend to put a lot of uh, pressure on your knees and your ankle joint. So just be careful about that. And if you are having flat feet, try to get a shoe which is recommended by a podiatrist where they will uh, prescribe you shoes with a good arch support. You know, there's an arch under our feet and it has to be well supported so that we don't go into ankle sprain or strain. Because once you get ankle sprain or any ankle injury, the recovery rate is very, very slow because the ankle holds all the body weight. So you just be careful not to get your ankle sprained or injured. Can I do just three days uh, walking? And then another three days just stretching. Uh, can I do it like this separately? Because uh, yes. also walking, to, walking. If it's just walking, do I still need to stretch first? Yes, definitely. Because walking is under strengthening. It's an aerobic exercise under strengthening. Stretching, you still need have. You still need to do. You have to stretch your lower limb muscles before you walk. Otherwise, during walking, you're going to have some calf cramps or your leg is going to just tighten up. And that's when you feel all this cramping sensation. Thank you. Okay, so I think, I think I'll pass the floor over to Sister yeah. Yeah. This, uh, yes. Which is the, the better, this walking and treadmill? If we use the treadmill. Well, I would always prefer to walk outdoors compared to on a treadmill. Well, if I have no choice, like now during the pandemic, everybody is under, uh, I mean, we all have to be indoors and you have no way of going outdoors, then fine, treadmill is okay. But um, be, make sure that your treadmill is not in incline. It should be leveled. Because if you're going to walk in the inclined uh, setting, then that is a different kind of exercise. 
if you're just going to do brisk walking for 30 minutes, you just have to do it on the uh, level where it's uh, level not inclined. And if you want to stretch your back muscles, your the, the muscles is at the back of your legs, okay, which is not commonly uh, flexible in most people, no matter how young or old they are, most people don't have good flexibility of their back leg muscles, the hamstrings and the calf and all. If you want to stretch it while walking, the best way is to walk backwards on a heel. So if you're doing it on a treadmill, you can incline it to about 15 degrees and then you can walk backwards. But be careful, <laughs> hold the railings if you don't feel uh, stable in the beginning. And even when you're walking on the treadmill, I would recommend you to use your sport shoes. The main reason why I use sport shoes is just to reduce the pressure on my knees and my ankles. Okay, Sister Vino, you're ready? We will come back again. I'll meet you all again after this to demonstrate just some exercises to be done when you're seated on the chair. Think uh, Karan Bai, let's go into the exercise demo because it's a very hot topic right now. So <laughs> all the spotlights are on you. So go ahead. Okay, so everybody is ready with their chair. It can be uh, anything with a back support or without a back support. I mean, if you are in the Older age group, I would suggest a chair with back support. If you're young, it's fine. Okay, everyone ready? Make sure there is a no, uh, anything, nothing around you blocking you or preventing you to move. Just you and the chair. So I will just uh, move my position. I set up a chair behind me. Am I visible? Yes. Okay. Can you see my legs? Uh, now, yes. I can see okay. below your knees. Below the okay, knees. Okay, good. All right. So we are going to come from the bottom to the top, okay? So we start with the legs, okay? You are going to stretch the back part of your leg. So how you do that is, okay, you just have to raise up and make sure your ankle is also moved backwards. And you can actually feel the stretch here. Can you feel? I, actually, I can't see whether you're nodding your head or what. Yes, Maybe we can yes, yes, we can. Okay, can you feel? Okay, now I want you to hold it for 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. Okay, relax. You felt the stretch? Yes. Okay, good. And also make sure when you're doing this, your breathing is rhythmic. Don't hold your breath and your back is straight. Don't uh, slouch like this. Okay? Your back has to be straight. And then raise up your left leg now and hold it for 15 seconds. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and eleven. Okay, so you can do this for about uh, three to five sets. So when I say one set means it's right and left, then it's one set. And then do right and left again, then you have completed two sets. It's not that one, two, three, no. You have to do left and right together, then you complete one set. Clear? Yes. Any of you did not feel the stretch? Because if you did not feel the stretch, I have a different method for you. Any of you did not feel the stretch? Do you can mean you just focus, the lower calf muscle? Different method? 
Uh, there is one more different method. If you feel it's difficult for you to raise your knee, I mean to raise your leg, and some of them who are hyper flexible, <laughs> where when they try to do this, they don't feel any stretch because their muscle is already flexible. So what they can do is they can take a piece of cloth, that is a shawl maybe, and what you do is you place it at the at your feet, at the sole. Okay, not too low, okay, not too low. Try to go up a bit and then pull the cloth towards you. Okay, when you do this, you can really feel the stretch from your hamstring. Okay, this is your hamstring muscle. This is your calf muscle. You can actually feel the stretch throughout the leg, okay, when you do this. All right, clear? Any questions? Hello, hi, brother. Uh, can you show uh, some heel pain exercise like heel or knee pain? Okay, heel. for heel pain, it depends why you're having heel pain. It can be two reasons. One is because of heel spur. Another reason is because of a condition called plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for, for okay. both these problems, what I would recommend is non-weight bearing exercises. Okay. So when we say non-weight bearing exercises, it means exercises done not in the standing position. It can be sitting, it can be lying. Okay. So okay. what you can do is, okay, um, you can't see my ankle, right? Can you see my ankle now? Yeah. Okay. All you have to do is, you just have to go up and back. And up. Right. Okay, you can do this about 10 to 20 times at first for this for the start. Okay, but if you want some pain relief techniques, what you can do is um, you know the uh, half a liter mineral water bottle, the small bottle, plastic bottle water where we get mineral water, you just fill it up with some yeah. water full and freeze it. Make sure it's frozen. And at night before going to bed, what you can do is you can just put it under your feet and roll it for about 10 to 15 minutes. That will actually relieve the pain. So the next morning you don't have any pain. And the other uh, method is you can wear socks before you go to bed so that at night if the room is cold, it will not affect your feet because when the room is cold, what happens is that they, there's a covering of muscle under our feet. There's a covering. Okay, so that covering will constrict. And what happens is our feet becomes a bit tight like this. Okay, so in the morning when I wake up, when I place the feet on the ground, I'm going to have pain. So I must make sure at night when I sleep, my feet are warm enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like heavy so, exercise, walking, aerobics kind of, it's not good for heel pain, right? Only yoga and stretching is good. Uh, that's true. So, but you still need to do some strengthening. So what I would suggest is you get good pair of shoes, which will protect your heel and your ankle and the sole of your feet. If your shoes are good enough, then there's no problem doing strengthening exercises mm -hmm. in standing position. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So I just wanted to show you all this exercise because this is a very important exercise. Once your hamstring muscles, that is the muscles behind your thigh, once that is flexible, you will prevent problems like low back pain and uh, the other back problems. Because what happens is that when these muscles are tight, it causes the low back to also become tight. So what happens? You will have some arching. You know, some people, you can actually see, you know, the low back is arched, which is not a good posture. Okay? This is the normal posture. All right? So, when your hamstrings are tight, this will also become tight. But when this becomes flexible, this muscle also relaxes. But there is another factor which uh, causes low back pain, that is the weakness of the abdominal. 
So when there is weakness of abdominal, it cannot compensate the pull of the back. Okay, because when the back muscles pull, we go for arch for arching of the low back. But when the abdominal muscles are strong enough, it can counteract. You get the idea. Do you get the idea? I, yes, I understand. It's clear yeah. for me. I hope it is for everyone. Uh, Nero, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I want to ask, like, how do you in, increase a, uh, more strong ab of your abdomen so that your back gets less pain? Yes, there are many abdominal exercises, a lot, a lot of them. So I'm going to demonstrate two exercises. But before that, I would advise you all to one thing. There's one uh, thing that I want to advise. All of you know sit up, right? You all know sit up? Yeah. The normal yeah. sit up? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's not advisable to do that if you're not uh, used to doing exercises. Okay. So please do not do sit up. You can do uh, other exercises. The best exercise for your abdominal is actually isometric strengthening. Isometric strengthening means you are strengthening your muscle without involving any change in the length of the muscle. For example, when I want to strengthen my bicep, what do I do? I take a dumbbell and I do this, right? So what happens? The bicep constricts, that means the bicep shortens and the bicep expands, elongates. And then I constrict and elongate. So in the end, what I, what I can see is there will be good muscle bulk and also muscle strength. That is one way of strengthening the muscle. But there is another way called isometric strengthening where we don't have to have that change in the muscle length during strengthening. How we do that is that we make the muscle contract in its original state. For example, okay, now all of you, uh, place your hands like this and the other hand, you have to give resistance. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try and bend your elbow against the resistance. But this hand, which is giving the resistance, should not allow the elbow to bend. Can you do that? I hope you all are doing. I can't see. Your... <laughs> yes, I can. So can you feel the tension in the biceps? Yes. yes. In the back. So that is, yes. And the back also, yes, right. So you're strengthening both your bicep and your tricep. So that is one very effective way of strengthening ex uh, muscles, actually. And it's quite a, a fast, it's actually a shortcut to strengthen your muscles. Keep it for how long? Strengthening, Keep uh, it for how okay. long? You can hold for 10 seconds. And it's advised for you to do 10 reps. Hold and for 10 I seconds. Okay. I do have, I do have, I'm all, I have a lot of knee pain also and very close pain. Yes, lot of there are many exercises, but I, <laughs> I can't show everything now. Otherwise, I know, I know, it's okay. I will see more of you on the, on the YouTube if there is YouTube. <laughs> sure, sure. What's the... I'll try to provide some <laughs> exercise handouts so that you can circulate amongst yourselves. Yeah, so see? Do you have any I, um, I could share if you all want, but uh, yeah, I will compile some and I will send like a playlist. Thank you. Yeah. You show the abdominal area. Yeah. Yes, the abdominal exercise, the abdominal strengthening. Okay, sitting on a chair, you can do this. That's the best part. You can do this while sitting on the chair. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the... Uh, main abdominal muscle you know people talk about six packs so that is the muscle that we're going to target now so what you have to do is you have to sit comfortably make sure you're stable on the chair and very important point don't use chair with rollers <laughs> it's very dangerous and make sure your chair is of good stability and what you can do next is you have to place your arms like this okay just like this Okay, place your arms like this, and I want you to push your body upright. That means make your posture straight and lean backwards slowly. Lean backwards slowly. 
lean, 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 till the point where you can't. Okay? Be careful, don't let your leg come off from the ground. Make sure it's properly planted on the floor. Okay, and then move backwards and hold. Hold for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back slowly. Okay? What is the this? breathing like? Is the normal breathing yeah. or you hold the breath? Never hold your breath. <laughs> Never ever hold your breath. Down. You have to breathe normally. When we but go down, should we breathe in or when we come up, breathe out? Just tell us the breathing procedure to go back. Should we hold the breathing or help take the breathing? There is no, there is no breath holding in this exercise. You have to just breathe normally. Breathe normally. Don't hold your breath. What happens when you hold your breath is that your muscles become tense. And when you are in this position, there will be a tendency to lose your stability if your muscles are tense. <clears throat> so we want to avoid that. So for that, we have to breathe normally. Don't focus on your breathing. Just breathe normally. I mean, all of us can breathe naturally, right? So just let your body breathe naturally. Okay, so that your muscles are well oxygenated and they are relaxed. Okay, so this is one exercise. Okay. And if when you're in this position and you feel that your legs are coming up, there's one method where you can do to prevent that. If you have a ball like this, or you have a roll, a towel roll, what you can do is you can put it in between your knees like this. Okay, just put it and press it. Okay, press it. Press it and then you go back. <laughs> okay? So this will give you some stability, but at the same time, it will strengthen your abdominal muscle. I don't know. Okay, clear. Okay. I have a, some safety suggestion here. <laughs> uh, I do this exercise. I have the chair, the way you have the chair, is the back. It has a back. So instead of, uh, I just move myself up on the chair, close to the edge, and then I go back. That way I have the back support in case my I lose my balance. Okay, first thing is that uh, if I go back, I lose my balance, I have a still a support back. The way you are showing, there is no support in the back. If you, if you, <laughs> if you lose your balance, you are, you are down on the floor, right? <laughs> Yeah, that is why I gave the suggestion yeah. to use a ball in between your legs because when you do yeah. that, you are concentrated on your legs. So you know that you, you should not lift your leg, your feet from the ground because you will yeah. only fall back when your leg is lifted from the ground. Right. But this way, right. you, so may, you still have the safety. But I'm saying to you, suggesting is that you still have the safety in case everything you else can... fails. Everything Me... else fails, you still have a sport in your back. If you lose your ball, you lose your balance, you still have a sport. So you, you move can, yeah. the chair. I mean, that's okay. This, I mean, just I'm making a suggestion. Oh. I mean, that you uh, Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a good suggestion, actually. And there's another way, actually. You can actually move it towards a wall, but don't right. go, don't put the chair against the wall because you need some space to go back, right? Right, right. You yeah, need that's to why you're the moving up. Yeah, that's why you're moving up yeah. to the edge of the chair in the, in the yes. beginning. Right? So you have a you have yes, a gap yes. between the back of the chair and your back. But don't, <laughs> but don't sit like this because this is also dangerous. You can fall yeah. forward even though you're going back. Yeah, yes. yeah. But you're yeah, no, you're you going back. That's what I'm saying. You're going back. You're intentionally going back or holding. Or if you have a chair with a bigger space, maybe a long bench. Yeah. Yeah, that will also work. How many seconds is that? Fifteen second hold. You hold for 10 seconds, you do for 10 reps. 10 seconds for 10 reps. Okay, got it. Yeah. And, uh, it's sitting on the bed, okay? It's sitting, sitting on, on the, the bed, okay? On my bed. Sitting on the... On your bed. Bed? Uh, no, on my bed. Oh, bed. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not recommended to do on the bed. Okay, because your bed is soft. And when you try to push in, you, your, your spine will actually curve too much. And it's not very good, actually. Now, when I say 10 seconds means rhythmic counting. One, two, 
three, four, not one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I know many of the my patients do that at home because they want to rush, you know, they want to finish fast. But if you don't do it in the proper timing, you will not get the optimum effect of the exercise. Okay. And uh, come back. Mm -hmm. You can come back quickly, right? Just hold for ten seconds, and yeah. then you can come back quickly. You don't have yes, to. Okay, come. just come back at your normal pace. Hmm? So I'm I'm just coming back slowly, just so that you're careful because if you're doing it the first time, you might experience cramps. Hmm? And another important thing when you're in this position, make sure your neck is not protruded forward. This is bad posture for the neck. Okay, always tuck your chin in. Okay, tuck your chin in. Right? Can you remember? Yes. Okay, so now I go to the next abdominal exercise. Okay, this is <laughs> this is quite safe. Okay, uh, you can have your back support and place both your hands behind your head. Can you see me? Yes. Can you see? All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to focus on your lateral muscles, your lateral abdominal muscles. So what it, what you can do is you can do like this. One, make sure your body is straight. Two, okay, like this, just like this. Your elbow should meet the opposite knee, opposite leg knee, okay? Just like that, okay? So how you count? The counting is one. left, right, is one and go again left right is two okay and how many you should do you should do ten uh ten reps how many sets ten sets if you can't do ten sets in the beginning you can stop at eight sets but you have to complete ten reps can you show okay. it again please uh, the, the repetition is it? How many repetition and all? If you could show it again, please. They want to oh, see. Okay. So you sit up straight. Okay. Make sure your posture is in the right position. Place both your hands behind your head. You can interlock your fingers, right? And place it behind your leg. And then your right elbow should touch your left knee. Okay, touch. And then repeat the other side. Clear? What if you can't touch you. without bending your, um, like bending or you make your leg higher or you make your uh, whole body closer? Like if you are uh, standing straight, like you can't touch the, the leg. What if you can't touch it? If you're standing straight, when you're sitting standing. straight. No, sorry, a sitting straight. You mean like you the, can't lift up your leg much, is it? Yeah, you can't touch it. Like uh, if that. Yeah. Place. So you have to go down lower. Okay. This because we are trying to target these muscles, and these muscles, the fiber is coming in like this. Okay. So the more repetitions we do, uh, we we go a lot. Uh, with the fiber, that's when we strengthen it. Got it, okay? got it. So it's okay to bend your body more instead of lifting your leg higher. It's, it's okay to yes. bend your body but more. But if you can lift your leg high, why not? <laughs> okay. Uh, with the, uh, can you show some hunchback exercise for posture, good posture? Hunch. For oh, this, is it? Yeah. Like whole day we are okay. sitting. Uh, like computer sitting work. Okay. So the reason for hunchback, there are many reasons. So one of the reasons is that your back, your upper back muscles, that means the muscles over here and here are weak. Okay. Those muscles are weak, but your anterior muscles, your front muscles, your chest muscles, your shoulder muscles are all very tight. One muscle is weak and one muscle is tight. So that is why your posture becomes like this. Yeah, always. Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to go against that. So one way you can do that is 
uh, you can place both your hands back. Okay. Interlock them like this. Interlock okay. And what you can do is you can push. Push it like this. While you are doing this, I want you to open up your shoulder. Can you do that? Is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You need me to repeat again? Yes. Again? No, it's okay. fine. So I'll just show again, just in case. Okay. Place both your hands, interlock your fingers like this, and push it down. Push it down. While pushing it down, you have to open up your shoulders. Okay. At least your chest will come forward. Okay. This is one way. Um, there is another way. But I need a corner. I don't know how to set this camera. <laughs> if you go to a corner, okay, you know a corner, right? Yeah. Okay, two walls face a corner. Yes. Walls face, yeah, face a corner. Place both your arms like this on like this. the walls. Okay, it should not be like this or it should not be like that. It should be, your shoulder should be 90 degrees and your elbow should be 90 degrees. Okay, and what you can do is you can drop okay your, your position you can drop your chest forward and you will feel the stretch over here so this will open up your shoulders and the hunchback will reduce okay so this one in the previous exercise do you do again for like 10 seconds and then 10 sets yes, yes. thank you it's good. So everything you hold for, for, for 10 seconds and you do for 10 reps is okay. But all this is, this one and this one and all is stretching. So if you want to go and hold up to 15 seconds, it's also good. But you can start with 10 seconds first because it could be quite painful in the beginning. Okay, because your muscles are tight and you're trying to elongate them. So it's going to be a bit painful. So you start for 10 seconds first. And then when you find yourself a bit more flexible, then you can go up to 15 seconds. Okay. So, my goodness, I think we could do a couple sessions with you. <laughs> what do you say, everyone? Yes. We want it more and more. Let's to invite more the more. Again. Every week. We know Ben, what have you done? <laughs> I know. So we know Ben, what should we do? Well, he has to come again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, this is his first time giving a um, workshop. Karen Bai, tell your experience. I actually, <laughs> I'm always behind the curtains. I never like to come on stage actually. You are great. You are great. I guess uh, I forced him to show, be your show. You're great. Amazing. I guess I forced him. I didn't take his no. I said, no, you are coming. Uh, <laughs> it was very good stretching. The abdominal stretching was fantastic. so good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, you currently do very good. Very good. Very, thank very you. Useful. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. All of you have, I, I, I hope all of you have benefited. I mean, if you are, if you have benefited yeah. from this, then I'm very happy. Yes. Oh, yeah, we are. We are. Mm -hmm. In different ways, everybody has benefited, I think. I think You're too. invited again. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, brother. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, everyone, for your comments. This is very helpful to get feedback. And, brother Karan, what was nice is that you gave us baby steps, you know, right. with, without, you know, to, to our capacity. We can discern that for ourselves. But I would like to invite Sister Vinu to close us with some meditation and her her uh, share a little bit of what she'd like to present to us today. It is now 7.30. We're supposed to have closed now, but see, this is such a big topic. People really uh, want to hear, you know, about health, body, mind, and soul. Um, here, I'll, I'll add myself so it doesn't look so. So, but what I'd like to do with your all your permission is to invite Sister Vino to give us a, a presentation. And for those of you who can stay on, we I would love for you to stay on. And um, 
I, for those of you who can't, that's okay. Please give me your email and all the information that Brother uh, Karan will give me, I will forward to you. I will also send to our WhatsApp groups. Um, Sister Hema can also send to the WhatsApp group. But if you're not on a WhatsApp group, please leave me your email and I'll be sure that you get it. And and also you, you probably would get it sooner because Sister Hema is in transit right now <laughs> um, if you gave me your email. So that's all I wanted to say on that and also to thank the speakers from uh, earlier to, in this session, uh, Brother Shashi Kantbai and the Consul General of India who, who uh, also gave a presentation. So just to give them a thank you, but I would like to open this time if it's all right with you, Sister Vinu, because I know it's late for you as well. Do you have time to present for us some? I think um, a lot of the things Karen Bai has already presented. Um, uh, you know, a lot of, I, I think a lot of people, all of you know that if you're mentally fit, um, brain also has an impact, right? So this is already a lot of information for well, today. Now, what did you mean by that? Just give us a little bit of a, a teaser on that um, because your background is as a neuroscientist. and. Uh, um, you know, how meditation and physio physical exercise can help the brain. Yes, don't let her go. Yes, we're not going <laughs> to let you go. Only if you're able, I don't want to push. This is, uh, this is what usually happens between two siblings who have grown up together in the center. We are literally like siblings. And um, so I guess uh, I really just wanted to share um, what happens in the brain is just, um, I actually have found a video, uh, a short video. If, if, if it's okay, I should show. Yes. Like two minutes, two minutes video. It's a summary. Um, I, in fact, uh, first shared the video with Karan Bai, just asking his opinion if this video is okay or not. And then he said, oh, that's too long and show this. And finally, we agreed to settle on one. So. Oh. Well, we're looking forward. So let me share out. Are you able to see? It's starting screen sharing is what it's oh. saying. Okay. Um, it doesn't play? Uh, no, it's not playing okay. yet. Oh. <laughs> okay. You are a co-host, so it should work. Okay. There How we go. How about now? Yes. We have a little man. body. Your muscles grow bigger. Your lungs breathe deeper. And your heart pumps easier. But what about your brain? Scientists have been studying the effects on movement of the mind for decades to answer this question and have found that physical activity is just as beneficial for your brain as it is for your body. Regular physical activity helps you learn faster and think clearer. It helps maintain good mental health while reducing risk of mental illness. It enhances, improves, and protects your mind. Now, at first that may sound surprising. Instinctively, we assume brains are best when left at rest. But researchers have proven that this instinct is wrong and uncovered reasons why minds need movement. One key discovery has been that physical activity releases a protein in our brains called BDNF. BDNF has been called miracle grow for the brain because it acts like a fertilizer, helping our brain grow, create new cells, and forge new connections. By increasing levels of BDNF, movement allows our brains to blossom. More and more benefits are discovered each day, like improved memory, enhanced focus, faster learning, heightened creativity, better problem-solving ability, and reduced risk of anxiety, depression, dementia, and cognitive decline. Movement isn't just great for our physical health. 
it's a necessity for our mental health. And just like our bodies need physical activity to grow stronger, our minds need it too. Brought to you by Participation. So in short, to really summarize, it says that um, for the brain to stay young, meaning when I say young, for new memory cells to be produced, neurons to be produced in the brain, it needs, um, it needs to be enticed. It needs um, to be excited. So what I'm saying through excitement means it needs information. One is, you know, how some people they do, they like to do um, brain teasing um, games like Sudoku or just different or le learning languages. So these are one ways how you can increase neuronal production. Another one is through exercise. So that's how you can keep the brain young and you can keep the body young. So two ways. So that is just in short. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think today we we definitely stimulated our brains because it was very interesting and fun. Um, now, are you saying that this is it, what you're going to present? <laughs> yeah, you could, short and sweet. I would just say that the contribution that you made really was benefit on many levels, and we look forward to having you again. Is that all right? Because you make a great team, and uh, it, it's really interesting, and also the effect that the I, I wasn't able to hear uh, your contribution with the meditation, incorporating meditation and the effect it has on the body as well as on the brain. So I think we will have to extend an invitation to both of you, if that's all right with everyone. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. Did they always did they uh, uh, have a research or study? You can say that also. That means increases cognitive function, as you said. That uh, teasing the brain by games or any uh, other things, and uh, how uh, that thing is related to our brain because we continuously read, study, and research work. Then uh, that means that's also helpful to increase this function. Yes. Yeah. yes, it does. And one of the harmful ways for the brain um, mm -hmm. is watching. You know, when we watch entertainment, what happens is um, we go through a lot of emotions, but that's really not helping the brain to, um, what do you say, um, for these cells. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be something challenging for the brain. Mm. Yeah. So are you saying like, television? Sorry. Do you mean, are you saying that television or YouTube or videos online, these are what are lethargic to the it, brain? Yeah, it is. It is. It, it can is. be, uh, it, mm. you know, because it's like, you know how mm. they say the brain goes like on a coma? <laughs> yeah. Like dull, dullness. Okay. Uh, that's what happens because... It's like we are watching, but there's nothing is exciting the brain. Yes, it excites me. Yeah. There should be creativity in uh, some sense of the earth. When we watch something that means no creation and thoughts are just uh, uh, going in a, inside from the uh, outside, right? And there is no creation of thoughts, no yeah. manufacture of thoughts in our brain factory, right? So yes. that was how, that you, probably Martha. what has happened during COVID, right? Thank you. What if what if there is um what if we're watching a video that is stimulating to the brain? Like um I know that there's a lot of um puzzles on YouTube where you can kind of solve crimes. Um are are is that still lethargic to the brain? Um to some extent it's okay. But there's just a lot of light, right? Pixels right. going through the eyes. But if you're right. physically doing something, there's not too much strain for the eyes. Yeah, we need a break in the first place. Yeah. I would like to add on that. Actually, it also affects the physical. I mean, uh, when you spend too much of time in front of the screen, prolonged time, I'd say, 
what happens is that your posture tends to go inwards like that. And so that is why we always advise you not to spend too long in front of the monitor or the screen. You Could have you to wake up and you have to stretch. Can, can you do a side view so they can see? Because it's hard for some yeah. to see the difference. So what happens when you are too concentrated, you know, for example, uh, like the sister was suggesting the crime scene <laughs> game <laughs> where you have to really look into. So what happens is you tend to get engrossed and what happens? Your posture because you go like this. And in the end, after one or two hours, if you get up, you'll feel your body aching. I mean, you are just seated. But why is it that you're feeling aching? It's because your body has gone into the, a very bad posture. This is not a normal posture for the body. This is the normal posture. So when you are in this posture for one hour, you wouldn't feel as bad pain when you're in this posture. Right. So that's going to affect your spine health a lot. Thank you. I mean, thank you. Anything, any questions from anyone? Okay. I guess no question. <laughs> well, without it being a whole nother, um, whole phase of questions, but this is really interesting and, and it's really actually very nice how you both present it because you're including different modes of health and being mindful of, of that um, mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, so I would like to say thank you so much. Um, I don't know if I can add myself. We will like to request him to come more for us. Uh -huh. Thank you. I, uh, thank you. Was that Niru? Um, yes. And I think that they're uh, thinking about it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and the other brother. I don't want to butcher his name. Um, oh, you, but Shashi I, oh, brother Shashikant. Shash, Shashikant? Very good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, he was wonderful. Everybody was wonderful. Yeah, it was nice. We had all ages and it felt like family to me. That's me. Okay. Um, and then to have Los Angeles and then Malaysia. I mean, so it's... It definitely felt family to me. Uh, in New York. New York. Oh, yes, Niru. Yes, she's in New York. <laughs> nice. It's my first time in America, actually. Ah. At least, ah. not physically, at least virtually. Yeah, one day. One day you'll be able to one come. One day. All right, Angel, shall we close with some silence or a few words? Uh, Sister Vini, would you like to close the uh, afternoon?